Hi guys, Matt from Hauta here, and today we're going to look at how to set up traction control. Now this one's going to get down and dirty with some pretty hardcore tech talk. So if you need to grab a fermented beverage and find a quiet place to follow along, I suggest you do that now. The first thing I need to let you know is that I'm using the most current version of the Elite Series firmware in this ECU, which as of right now is 2.34. If you're not sure what firmware you have, simply connect to your ECU and select Tools, Firmware Version. Traction Control is available on all of our dual connector Elite Series ECUs, as well as the Ford Falcon plug-in ECU. A quick distinction to make here is we're going to be talking about traction control for street and circuit cars here today, and not so much high-level drag racing. That's partly because the traction control function discussed here uses the relative speed of the driven versus the non-driven wheel speed to determine whether or not to go into traction control or not. This distinction is important and it's not to be confused with advanced torque management which is a feature that only our 2500T ECUs and race expansion modules have. Advanced torque management uses a target drive shaft RPM over time and adjusts ignition timing, boost and the rev limiter to control actual drive shaft RPM versus a predefined target drive shaft RPM. If you want to know more about advanced torque management control, we've got a separate video on that topic that explains the ins and the outs of how that function works. So let's get into the software and walk through the traction control function now. As with so many of the more advanced features on the Elite ECU, to use traction control, you must also have some other functions enabled. In this case, before we even attempt to turn on traction control, we need to set up wheel speed inputs. In this case, for simplicity, or complexity depending on how you look at it, I'm going to set up four individual wheel speed inputs. Wheel speed inputs can be the reluctant or digital signals, and they do need to be calibrated to let the ECU know how many pulses per kilometre or mile that the ECU should expect. The ECU uses the main source of wheel speed for things like vehicle speed that's sent over CAN to a display dash, or as the access values for any channel in the ECU that uses vehicle speed. You can select a specific wheel or an average of the driven, undriven or all four wheels for this. For what it's worth, the ECU determines which wheels are the driven versus the non-driven wheels from the main setup page under vehicle information drive type. Now in my case, I've elected to wire in wheel speed sensors on all four corners, so I need to select how the ECU determines which wheel speed is used for determining the slip between the front and the rear. We select this in the derived channels tab. The ECU can use an average of the left and the right, or it can dynamically evaluate which side is moving faster at any one point in time and use that value. The choice is yours. All right, that's the wheel speed sensor setup. We're halfway there. So let's go into the traction control function and have a look at how to set that one up. As you can see, we've got two options now for the type of traction control you want to achieve. If you're running a street car and you want traction control similar to that of an OEM factory car where it simply cuts power to the engine when the driven wheel starts slipping, then turn on the PID control and it just simply works. A word of warning though, this style of traction control is pretty aggressive and it doesn't give you a massive amount of precision in the control you're doing. If you're looking for something a little more precise and predictable, then I'd suggest using the percentage cut type of traction control. What the percentage cut traction control allows you to do is dictate how much power the ECU pulls from the engine based on the rate of slip between the driven and the undriven wheels. Now we're gonna cover how to map this in just a moment, but for now, let's continue to look at the traction control setup options. You've got the freedom to enable or disable a traction control function completely using a direct input switch. As I go over into the settings tab, you'll notice that I've got a conditional activation setting that works in conjunction or in place of the dedicated switched input. Now in my case, I normally just use the conditional activation whenever the throttle is over about 20%. The other settings on this page are fairly self-explanatory. The minimum speed of the function to be active and whether or not you want to use a fuel or ignition cut. Now we get into the magic of the system. We've got two maps that are used to calibrate the traction control settings in the Elite ECU. We've got a desired slip table and a cut percentage table. The way I typically set this up, and it really does vary depending on a lot of variables, so feel free to not listen to the way I do it at all if you've got a better way of doing things. 
So what I normally do is press the F3 tab and I add an axis based on vehicle speed to the desired slip table. This gives me the ability to allow a different amount of tire slip based on the actual vehicle speed. Remember, this table is a percentage, so 10% of 50 kilometers an hour is very different in the amount of actual slip than 10% of 250 kilometers an hour. As a rule of thumb starting point, I target between 10 to 20 kilometers an hour slip, and for our American friends, that's seven to 15 miles per hour. The vehicle speed that the EC uses as the value for this x-axis here is found in the main source dropdown on the vehicle speed input setup page. The other map we've got is the cut percentage map. This is where we tell the ECU how much power to pull out of the engine based on how much slip error there is. The x-axis of this map represents how much extra slip there is between the driven and undriven wheels over and above the desired slip percentage map. So the value in the map here that we calibrate represents the number of fuel or ignition events the ECU will cut out. So if we had this whole map set to 10%, then whenever the front and rear slip was more than 2% greater than our desired slip table, the ECU would cut one in every 10 ignition pulses. The outcome of this would be roughly a 10% reduction in output, torque, and horsepower. Now, because the transmission's a torque multiplier, we typically need to be more aggressive with the traction control in the lower gears than the higher gears. So most people set up the cut percentage table based on both traction control slip error and also enable a second axis based on the actual gear position. That's the basics of how to set up traction control. There's literally infinite variables that will affect how aggressive you need to be in your percentage cut to optimize the traction control function. Now the biggest cofactors to getting the system dialed in are how much power your engine makes, the weight of your vehicle, the gear you're in, the size of your tire, the amount of grip available at the track, and my suggestion is if you don't know where to start, then set up your desired slip table to give you 15 kilometers an hour of slip, or 10 miles an hour for America. And be aggressive with your cut percentage. Start with 25% across the board, then bring your cut percentage down until you get a smooth, controllable transition from slip to no slip. I know this was a long one, so thanks for staying with me. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below or email us at support at I'm Matt from Haltech, and I'll see you next time.